You can say a lot of things about Alphonse Capone. You can call him a ruthless killer, and it's true. He killed his boss at the Valentine's Day massacre and hundreds of other people that he had killed. He's also called a philanthropist. True, during the Great Depression, he actually had soup kitchens, the first guy to develop them in Chicago. He also took care of a lot of families from his Chicago neighborhood. So true, he was a philanthropist, and he was an entrepreneur as well. After all, he did have his boss killed. That's pretty entrepreneurial from a roaring 20s perspective. And he made a lot of people a lot of money. But above all, anything you want to say about Al Capone is that he was a gangster. And a gangster needs a car befitting a gangster. This is the 1928 Cadillac that did belong to Al Capone that was armored heavily with a one inch thick glass with a drop down rear window, the perfect gangster mobile. In fact, it's even green and black, exactly like the 75 Cadillacs that were issued to the Chicago Police Department all those years ago. And the coolest thing about this Al Capone car is that we can still drive it today. Well, I guess first of all, if you're gonna drive Al Capone's car, you're gonna need Al Capone's hat. How do I look? Well, first things first, whoever drove this car for Al Capone had to be a big guy, at least my size, because the steering on this thing feels like a Sherman tank. But once you get it going down the road, it rides like you'd expect a Cadillac from 1928 to ride. Very, very smooth down the road. But you can imagine, even though most of the armor has been taken out of this car and during its last restoration, it's still a very, very heavy car. There's a thousand pounds of glass or so, they tell me, in it. When Al Capone was finally arrested, everybody knows the story about how Elliot Ness and his guys arrested him for tax evasion. So they basically confiscated everything that they could of Al Capone's. And among the things they confiscated was this very car. So it belonged to the Treasury Department for a while. And there was some talk about using the car for transport for Franklin Roosevelt himself. It seems he was going to Atlanta and they were worried about an assassination plot. So they thought, well, we'll drive him around in this thing. After all, it is bulletproof. That was never actually substantiated, but it does make good lore. Now you can see this one inch bulletproof glass that's on all four doors. It's also on the windshield and on the rear backlight. The rear backlight is unique in the fact that it drops down so that a guy could stick a Thompson machine gun through there and shoot at any pursuers. So what we have here is a car that is so rich in history, it's almost unbelievable. All its life, it spent time in front of people who paid money to go and see it. Now the restoration of this car is spectacular. Everything is straight, everything is properly colored, just like the 1928 Cadillacs that the Chicago Police Department had. The last time it was at auction, it was estimated at 750,000 to a million dollars in terms of value. When it arrived at the John O'Quinn collection, nobody's really exactly sure what John O'Quinn paid for it. However, it was darn close to that. So a million dollars for a car that probably has earned 10 or 15 times that over the years, sounds like a bargain to me.